are so excited to be here today with this special Mother's Day tribute with my beautiful queen mother, Hazel Williams, here with me today. And I want to thank you all, first of all, for your prayers for her. This is the result of your prayers. And I thank God for our praying church, Ebenezer. I love you all. And I just thank you all for your prayers and your faith. And that is why she's here with me today. And I realize that today, Mother's Day is not always a happy day for a lot of people. My precious mother never knew her mother, and she had a lot of challenges, and she's going to share with you today what it took for her to keep her faith alive and have the legacy of faith and family that she has established for us. And saying that, I'm reminded of a hymn that I used to hear her sing at church when she would sing in the choir on Mother's Day. The name of the song was Faith of Our Mothers. Faith of Our Mothers, Living and loving still. In cradle song and bedtime prayer. Faith of our mothers, living faith, we will be true to thee till death. Faith of our mothers, loving faith, fountain of our childhood's trust and grace. Oh, may thy consecration prove source of finer, nobler race. Faith of our mothers, Christian faith. In truth beyond, our stumbling creeds still serve the home and save the church. And breathe thy spirit through our deeds. Faith of our mothers, Christian faith. We will be true to thee till death. Oh, how the verses of that song ministered to me as a child. And it represents everything that a mother epitomizes in what you have, dear mother. Uh, as I, I want to thank you for not throwing away your faith. Hebrews chapter 10, I'm going to read a scripture. In Hebrews chapter 10, verses 35 and 36 says, Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward, Mm -hmm. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. And yes, Mother, you have received many promises over the years because of your faith. The generational reward means that someone had to sacrifice. Oh, yes. Yeah, you sacrificed. Oh, yes. Uh, you laid a foundation. And remember, we should sing that song, On Christ the Solid Rock. On Christ the Solid Rock. Yes, amen. And you had a beautiful voice when you were singing. And, uh, and I'm just so excited because you, there was something that uh, just resonated with me. And there was a seed plant in my heart just hearing you walk through the house singing those hymns. Okay. And, and, and you know, I want to say to, to young moms, you know, and she's going to talk a little bit. She's really going to talk today. But I just want to just share just a little bit. Because she's a little bit nervous, but I think as I talk a little bit, she's just going to be, in a few minutes, say, okay, be quiet, it's my time. <laughs> her sense of humor and her grace, as you can see, is, is, is why I'm who I am. And I thank God for her. Um, Mother, your rock, you were just such a solid rock. Um, and you believe so much in Jesus. I mean, you always talked about him. I remember when I was a little girl, and I would be yes. so sick with asthma. They yes. didn't have much out for asthma then. But you would rock and pray. You would rock and pray over me. And I really believe that's where I got that love for prayer. Because oh, I love yes. to pray, but I got it from my mother. See, those, that anointing for prayer can be passed down generationally. Oh, yes. And so you passed down a legacy of prayer. And honestly, all of your children and grandchildren and greats, I mean, they know how to pray. Yes, they are prayers. Yes, they do. And you know, it came from just, just listening to you. And I tell parents sometimes, you know, children don't, they hear best with their eyes. That's they right. don't they don't necessarily listen to you. We don't listen to you, dear mother. But we saw what you did, and we did what you did. Yes. And yes. I just want to thank you for setting that example of perseverance, of suffering, and because you understood there was something greater yeah. than yourself. Oh, Lord, yeah. that, And you had to live by faith because you didn't get off to a very good start. Oh, no. You know, and I'm going to let you talk about that. But, uh, but before you get to that, I just want to thank you for some of those quotes, you know, when you say words and, you know, uh, principles that you live by. Those children are, are listening to you, and it goes in their spirit. Mm -hmm. And it really, um, 
It governs their lives, their decisions. Mm -hmm. One of the quotes you used to always say to me is, no matter who do wrong, you do right. <laughs> always, always. And I will, you know, if you say it enough, mothers and parents over and over again, you know, if you keep saying it, you know, it gets in your children's ear. And then when they're not even around, you are listening and you hear mama's voice saying, now no matter who do wrong, you do right. But you know what was more important about you? What? You didn't just say it, you did it. You know, you, you did it. I watched what you did. Okay. You know, I watch how no matter who treated you wrong, and you had you had some reasons to, you know, life wasn't real good to you. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't good. And so you had reasons to sometimes not always treat people right, but you always did. And sometimes a lesson you taught me was even though people I knew that were not there for you, that let you down, that hurt you, you still always did what was right by them. And I remember sometimes wondering, why are you doing that for them? Why are you blessing somebody that's not there for you? But you always said, Jeanette, no matter who do wrong, you do right. You reap what you sow. You know, you care about everything. So, oh, yes. you know, um, we, we do care. You taught us to do that. And you and you hate a lot. You always said, tell the truth no matter what. I, we would get spanked more for for lying than anything else. You said, don't lie to me. You know, you hate, say, I hate a liar. Oh, yeah. And you would say a liar would also would, would be a person who would steal. That's and right. so you instilled that in us, that honesty, that integrity, mm. and that character. Yes, so yes. I want to thank you so much publicly before everyone for the example that you set. And if I'm anything today, I just want you to know, this is my example, and this is where she paid the price, though. So I want her talk to you now about her challenges and um, what it takes to really have a legacy of faith. So first of all, Mother, I want to ask you, uh, where does your foundation of faith come from? My foundation of faith come from living in the home with my grandmother. When my mother passed away when I was just a year old. I didn't know her. Mm -hmm. So she wasn't there to teach me, but my grandmother had a lot of faith and she was a praying woman. She believed in God, and she believed in doing the right thing. She believed in doing what she knew the Lord would have her to do. She didn't worry about what was going on out there in the world. She loved her family. She loved her church. She had a few friends, but not a lot of friends, just a few friends that she knew was born again Christians. And my faith come from watching her do what she knew God would have her to go. So I said, well, you know, as I... Grew, as I grew up and my children come along, that's a good thing to say to them as they grow from day to day, mm -hmm. is to tell them about faith mm -hmm. and let your faith rise and how to learn how to lean and depend on Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus is mm -hmm. the way. The only way you're going to get through mm -hmm. at that time then mm -hmm. was depending on Jesus. Mm -hmm. In today's world, I wouldn't want to be out there raising children because it's much harder than it was then. Mm -hmm. But I thank God for Lord lead me how to talk to my grandchildren mm -hmm. and how to raise my children, my grandchildren, my great grandchildren. And I thank God for what He has done mm -hmm. for me through them. Mm -hmm. And when they come around, I can see Christ in their lives. As they speak to me, I can determine. Yes, you know what you're talking about. You ain't just talking because you want to have something to say. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you have placed something in their hearts mm -hmm. to say the right thing. Mm -hmm. And I just thank God for just being here today to be able to share just a few little things. Mm -hmm. Not a lot, but it's so mm -hmm. much I could say. Mm -hmm. Time will not permit me to say it. Mm -hmm. all the things that I really would like to say, but mm -hmm. just a few little things. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, Mother, you know, you, we always thought, we always said you were just so strong, you were like a rock. You didn't have any siblings. You didn't have, never met your mom. Right. You know, and your father had another life and another family. And so, and so what, what, what was it like? What, what made you not feel bitter? Because what I, one of the things that I noticed about you, and when I listened to your stories and how no matter what it what was going on in your life, you always seem to just um, persevere. And I, and you went through a lot of suffering, and you there wasn't anyone there to really, uh, and I think that's why you became such a, a nurturing mother who just, 
your children were everything to you and your grandchildren. Even children in the neighborhood, I remember, oh, yeah. would come to Miss Hazel Williams' house mm -hmm. when they just felt bad. You always seemed to draw people through your suffering, I think, and through what you didn't have. So what do you say to people who, you know, now it's like I had these awful things happen to me as a child, and, you know, and, and, and I have, I, 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 so I have a right to be bitter, I have a right to hate, I have a right to just look out for me and my four no more, but that was not you. You looked out for everyone in the community. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we were in public housing at that time. You were a woman of dignity and respect in your, you know, in our, in our apartment. And back then in the projects, things were really different then, you know, oh, yes. very nice and well kept and clean. Everyone looked out for each other. Oh, and, yes. and it was a sense of pride and oh, respect, yes. always respect, yes. you know, always yes. respect. Yes. But you would provoke children to respect their parents, yes. you know, a lot of times than when the parents can do a thing with them. Right. So right. what made you care so much about other people and decide that I want to be better instead of bitter? Well, as I say, getting back to my grandmama, she was always like that. She always loved people. She loved children. And whenever people come around and talk to her, she would always have encouraging words. And I would listen to her. And then when mine come along, be, be kind to people. Because somebody is not doing the right thing, be kind to them. You can change people mm -hmm. more with the word pray with them. Mm -hmm. Teach them how to pray. Mm -hmm. And sit down and pray with them. Put your hands on their lap mm -hmm. and say, listen, baby, we mm -hmm. got, this is not our problem. This is we got to give this to God mm -hmm. and let the Lord lead you yeah. and guide you mm -hmm. because we can't do it our own, mm -hmm. but God can lead us. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have prayer and we're going to ask God to take control of our lives. Mm -hmm. And as we, when we get bitter, that's not from God. That's from Satan. Mm -hmm. And we don't want Satan to take control of our lives. But we got to stand before God one day mm -hmm. and give an account of what we do. Mm -hmm. And you may not realize it now because you're young, but see, I, I know what I'm talking about mm -hmm. because I have had to, I haven't been perfect all my life. And I don't think there is a perfect person. But when you do make an error, go to God. Ask for forgiveness, and he is a forgiving God. Amen. He is a loving God, and he will forgive you and let you go on. And he's watching you all the time. Don't think you can hide from him. You might can hide from mama, but God knows what you're doing or what you're saying, and you'll repay one day if you don't repent and give it to the Lord because you have to go to him so he can lead you and guide you as to which way to go the rest of your life. Amen. That is so true and so important, Mother. Um, and the thing about you, too, is you always have had a servant's heart. You taught us to serve. Yes, yes, yes. Love people. Mm -hmm. Love other people. Do for other people. Mm -hmm. Something happened in the community. You don't have to wait for somebody to ask you for nothing. Mm -hmm. Make a pie. Make a little pound cake. Fry a little piece of chicken. Come <laughs> over there and say, have some food. I know you're busy. You ain't. You don't have time to cook, or you mind ain't on cooking. But just, just here's a little something for you. Mm. Just enjoy just a little Aww. something. And when you do it, think mm. about that. Hayes a care. Aww. She cares for you, and that's mm. what Jesus would do. He mm. would. He wouldn't just throw you away. Comfort, comfort, speak mm. words of comfort. Mm. Find a scripture, read a scripture, say a prayer, mm. and leave people with, uplift people's heart. Mm. Don't leave them sad regardless of what they're going through. Wow. You know, I've had many young people to come to me and talk to me about things going on in their life, in their home, even with mothers and fathers. Because my mother wasn't there. That didn't mean I had no issue with mothers and fathers. My granny was there, my aunts was there, and one particular aunt I know, she was there most of the time. And she would always talk to me and encourage me to do the right thing and to love my friends and love people, love people in the neighborhood. And that's just the way I grew up. So why wouldn't I do the same for my children and my children's friends? I know. My children were going to school and they had many little friends. They used to love to come to Miss Hazel's. I don't know why. Miss Hazel won't mad. She won't fuss it. She won't knock it over benches. And sometimes they would say things that, that I didn't like. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not the way. That's not the right way. You got to do it the right way. You have children of your own one day. You got to know how to treat your own. It's not your own. Children, you, you got family members. 
Just try to take care, do the right thing for your family members. Mm -hmm. Say what you know. God would have you do. This is why we go to Sunday school. This is why we go to church. When you're there, pay attention. Don't care your tablets and pencils. And be writing why the preacher preaching or why the why the prayer pray. The, the, the preach, the digging is praying. Listen to what they are saying. If you're going to write, write what they said. Go home and study what right. they said. Right. And then when you have something to say, you'll know what you're talking right. about. And you are saying it's good to write and take notes. You're just saying you need to be taking notes from the scriptures from the and what scripture. the pastor is saying, what the, pastor the said. speaker is saying, yeah. and not just not out here. Not saying that you don't learn how right, to right. in school last week. Right. It's okay to take it. Right. But, mm -hmm. What I hear you saying, Mother, is respect and reverence for the house of God. Right, right. And for the right. things of God. And that is one thing you did teach us. Right, right You know, right. always respect the, 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 the people of God, the minister of the Lord. Always respect the preacher. You always taught us the love and respect for the preacher. Uh, and that he was sent by God. That's right. And you believe that. Because in right. your day, you know, I think you all would, your grandmother and all, they would invite the preacher to the house we on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And uh, he and always there was something that, you know, that was done in the community. Right. The respect and love. Mm -hmm. You always taught us the respect for the things of God. We never went to the church with, with you know, with the... You know, we had to get our attitude right if we go to church. That's right. You know, that's and right. you weren't going to have no foolishness in the church. That's right. You know, you're going to be on time, and you're going to sit there, and you all, you had very high standards. You really oh, did. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> I tell people, I said, well, you know, when you're Hazel Williams' daughter, you got to do it right or don't do it at all. And you would say that. If you're not going to do it right, don't do it at all. That's right. Moment of excellence, and I thank you for that because you really, um, you had a standard high. I think today's world, Mother, I think the message here is keep that. And it's one of the things that you said without actually articulating with your words, but with your actions and your attitude and your rebukes, it was like, keep those skirts slow and those standards high. <laughs> and I just thank you for those principles. And you know what? They don't change. The world changes. Change. People change. change. Right. But the word of the Lord right. and the standard um, never still changes. Still stands. Still stands. Yes. And the thing about it, if you don't, do the right thing, you will give an account of it. Mm. And things will become hard to you. Mm. If you do the right things, what's coming hard? God can make it seem like it's a good, a easy thing. Mm. You know, you give it to Him, and He'll mm. turn the situation around. What you see looking like gonna be bad, God can turn it around and turn it out to good. He can mm. make it. He can make it good. Mm. He can make it right. Yes, he will. He's done it for you. So over. many times, so many yes. times. I've seen things look like just won't go to work. But you get on your knees. I know a lot of people ain't on their knees now. But it, 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 it's talk about the knees, but you can talk to God anywhere. You can lay in your bed at night and talk to God. You can walk down the street and talk to God. He hears you because he hears and sees and knows everything. Well, I tell you, hearing you pray and hearing you just call Jesus, Oh, I fell in love with Jesus because you were always talking about him. You would just call on him. I would just hear you always. You had such a passion for Jesus. You didn't know a lot of word to study. And, and, and you know, you we weren't going to church or to a lot of Bible studies and none of that. But there was, and, and I think with, for you and your generation, what I'm trying to understand and what I want to, that that needs to be passed down. And I'm really looking at this and just, you know, and questioning why and how was it that you all had so much Jesus in your hearts and you were called Jesus with such a passion and I mean believe it was real. Jesus will do it. You just trust the Lord and there was no evidence sometimes that he was doing anything because we had some really hard times. That's right. And uh, But still I said that faith man, no matter what, she's calling Jesus. Wait a minute, you have to learn how to wait on God. Ooh, come on. Ooh. God is an on time God. Come on now. This time is not our time. You got to call on him and then you got to wait on him. He ain't standing there ready to jump when you holler. You holler, but you got to stop and pray. Thank you. And then thank him for what he's doing mm -hmm. even thank before he do it. Thank him for what he's doing, yes. even before you know it's coming. Mm. And whenever it's come, it's right on time. Mm. And sometime it come, and something happened, you say, God was in the nickel time. That's the, that's the time he was supposed to come. 
His time is not our time. Right. So just give him the honor and the praise, which you know he is going to do. Amen. And he always did it. And getting back to how I learned how to do it, I heard my grandmother call on Jesus and pray. And she would thank him for things that hadn't even happened. And I would wonder, what is she talking about? Mm. But as I began to raise my children, you know, I know, I learned know what she was talking about. But see, the thing we don't know, the older people can see ahead of us. Amen. Speaking to the younger people, mm. the older people can see ahead of us. Mm. God talks and deals with the older people. While we out there running and playing mm. and enjoying ourselves, so many times, the Lord, we can be in the kitchen cooking or doing what we got to do and talking to Jesus. He revealed himself to us, and we got to wait and see what he's going to say, how he's going to say it. And if you give it to him, he'll work everything out all right. Mm -hmm. That is so true. The song you just sing, turn it over to Jesus. And he'll work it out. Turn it over to Jesus. And Remember you sing it. that song? Oh, he'll, he'll make everything all right. right. You would sing that song. And that's that was one yeah. of my favorite songs. your favorite song. Turn it, mm -hmm. turn it over to Jesus. You can't walk on that holding nothing in your heart about anybody. Mm -hmm. They may say things about you. Mm -hmm. They may do things about you. They may even lie about you. But you don't worry about that. You just say, God, mm -hmm. you fix that. And you take them, you straighten them up. But you don't go to them. You don't even talk to them. Just give it to God, and he'll work it out. We don't know how. But when it gets straight, you know God done it. Because you didn't have to do nothing. Because we can't do it anyway. We are not God. And we cannot do it. Amen. Wow, you're preaching, lady. This is a miracle. This is a woman two years ago. I wasn't sure would even see the end of 2020. Praise God for being here. Oh, thank Praise you, Jesus. Your, the legacy of faith and the Word of God, folks, it works. I challenge all of you mothers and uh, young mothers. Now, this is the legacy. This is what you want to leave for your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. And you're now you're seeing great grants coming right along with that same spirit of faith and prayer and stand on the word of God. And I just want to thank you for that. And we want to encourage you all, don't give up. Know that maybe you're start maybe you didn't get off to a good start. Maybe you're a single mom. Maybe you had children out of wedlock. Maybe you started having a baby, had a baby twelve years old. And you say, Lord, you know, I don't know how I can do this. My circumstances are not looking good. You know what I'm saying? And you, maybe your husband left you, maybe you've never had a husband. My mom was married, they were divorced by the time I was four years old. And she wanted all she ever wanted was a family because she didn't have one growing up. And so for her, life and happiness and her goal in life was to just be married. And you said have lots of kids that, and cook. And she just a born nurturer and wanted that. But that did not happen. That was not in her cup. You know, we all have a cup of suffering, we have a cup of blessing. That's right. But out of her cup of suffering, a whole lot of generational blessings came. That's right. And we're so grateful that she stood the test of time. We watched her persevere. Sometimes your suffering is for others who are watching you. I just want to say that. Oh, yes. It's worth it to hang in there. Oh, yes. To oh, call. you got to call on Jesus. Yes, you got to yes, know yes. him. Yes. And yes. we have so much word now. And what I was saying earlier, it's interesting to me that we have so much more word and access to it 24-7. But we have such little faith That's and right. such little and such little knowledge of Jesus right. and who He really is, and what it means to live by faith. Amen. So I want to challenge you to go back to that old song, "Faith of Our Mothers," and, and 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 don't give up. Don't let go of your faith. Don't throw your away your faith. No, it no. does have great recompense of reward, Mother, doesn't it? Yes. It so does. many rewards. You're yes, still it here. Does. Yes. Rewards. It does. Oh my Lord, and God yes, is healing you and looking yes. at you. So the grace many, of God. So many, so many times mm -hmm. I didn't know whether mm -hmm. I'd make it or not. And so many times I've been through situations. I didn't know I had been through them until I went to sleep and woke up mm -hmm. and my children tell me what had happened. But thank God I'm still here mm -hmm. today and I sort of feel like going on. I just feel like going on to see what the end is going to be. We just want you to know that she is our matriarch. We love her and we thank God for your prayers for her. And I pray that you will take to heart everything she said. And it's, no matter what your start in life is right now, guess what? God can turn around, and he will give you that blessing, and he will reward you. But keep in mind also that it may not be that you will always see the rewards in your lifetime. It may not be that you will get what you thought you wanted and that you thought you deserved. And none of us deserve anything. But we have goals and things that we think we deserve and we should have gotten. But it just didn't turn out that way. Don't give up. Okay. Maybe God wants to use it yes, so yes. that we can see he used her pain and suffering to show us how to go through. That's right. Right. One yes. generation pays the price. 
and sows the seed and suffers for the next generation to reap. And they will right. have a harvest. That's and it goes on and on and on to a thousand generations. That's God right. bless you, Ebenezer family and friends everywhere. We love you all. We thank you. And right now I'm going to let Mommy close out with just a short prayer so that she can um, just give you that matriarchal blessing. Righteous Father, in the name of Jesus, I do thank you. I thank you, Lord, mm -hmm. for today. I thank you for life, health, and strength. Lord, I thank you because you are so worthy to be praised. I give you the glory and the honor for all you've done and all you did and all you're going to do. This is the day that we're going to give honor to you, Lord, because this is your day. We give honor. We give praise. praise yeah. We glorify his holy name. Mm -hmm. We thank you and we glorify you mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you.